So you can tell this was not pre-planned. <laughs> For the Vanagon, we wanted to get a truck fridge, the original Vanagon one, I tried to get it repaired and over and over, just totally not worth it. So don't do that. Instead, uh, go with a truck fridge. They have a couple different kinds. Um, this is what this is the direction we're going, the ones that kind of like slide into the, to the void that is there now and can slide out. So I went with a, um, we have a Bouge RV 30 quart and a Coles Air which is about a 50 cord, a little more. If you look in the manual, it's like 53.2, I believe. So both come with AC chargers and uh, cigarette lighters, almost identical kind of configuration. Uh, let's go take a look at the Bouge RV. So with this one, it comes with an insert. Oops, kind of this hollow, kind of a hollow plastic insert. And then it has grooves. So that's what it looks like without. So you. Uh, there is not a drain plug or anything like that for this one or the other one. Let's put that back in place. So if you want a little bit of a divider, both of them come with LED control panels. So we'll get into that later. Uh, both also have a hinge-based system. The lid is uh, very nice. It's a um, kind of a wrapped plastic, I guess. But, uh, both have very well... This one seems very well made. Showed up very nicely as well. We kind of like show the side here. And you can see where it's plugged in. Now the Coles Air is interesting. Yes, it's a bigger fridge. So it because of that, it actually comes with a rack separator. Okay. And this also has a slide out. And this is like a rubber thing that kind of seals the top there that out and now you can see if you you can have all of the space without the divider okay and then that would be being there and this one also comes with an LED light that's nice and there's the um, LED indicator there this one also comes with two options you can have it either open like this and it also has a mag magnetic shut okay um, I don't know if I totally get, I mean, obviously it's for drinks, but it's shallow. So it seems a little weird that you would maybe do that. But anyway, um, same sort of mechanism here where you have the seal and then there's a bit of a lip on the corner. So it does, should effectively seal the cold in there. These apparently can be undone and then reset here. So you actually can have it open. Now it would open up like that in this case, because you you can only mount it there. There's nothing on that side, right? Makes sense. But for the van again, that's maybe not the best because then if it opens up like that, but it has to be tucked in because of the exhaust here for the compressor thing. Um, when that slides in, that's maybe not the best scenario. So I'm going to leave it like this. We'll leave it like that. Uh, this one also, I noticed there, and I read online too, some people were complaining that there's a bit of a toxic smell. It's true. This does have <laughs> a, a much more noticeable, like a glue smell or something, I think just, or it could be um, this material here. Not quite, I mean, I guess it's like aluminum. It feels like a, like a thick aluminum foil or something. You can see actually where there was an indentation here. So um, it's okay, but I don't know. We'll see how this one, by the way, so when it showed up, it showed up in a single box construction, which compared to that one, they double boxed it. It's really nice. This one showed up perfectly. This one, what I'm about to show you, is interesting. Here is how this showed up. So this, this is, I think, just a protective plastic coating for the metal outside. And then this, this is how this showed up. So that's the uh, compressor thing there. You can see. So that just popped out. That just popped out but it can be screwed back in. So what I'll be doing, there's two screws up there. I'll show you that later. Um, and then this obviously too. 
It's just rougher all the way around. Again, a single box setup. I think this is again, just um, this plastic protective stuff. So I, I would assume you could just, once you really commit to it, peel that off completely. A little weird, to be honest. I don't know how it performs or how it's going to perform, but we'll certainly find out. There you go. Let's see. And I'll also show you how they fit in the van again as well. Okay, this definitely fits. You actually have a bit of a gap on either side. So maybe not optimal because you probably want to make sure it's secure. So maybe some styrofoam or some other areas of that you can actually pack things. So that's not a bad thing in the van again. The other thing I want to call out is if you wanted to actually pull this a little tighter, like all the way against the wall, this is actually really good. The way this hinge is set up, it doesn't stop it from opening. And then I can get it to there, so you could still reach in without too much problem. Good enough to grab stuff and then shut it back. And then for my scenario, for the electricity part, here's the situation for electricity. I'm gonna plug it in here, and then I have a battery bank plug-in underneath it's not there right now and then of course i have my renergy which also is grabbing solar to charge that thing okay and for comparison you can see now this definitely displaces some space so we're going to slide this puppy in the one thing i'm going to see i think yeah those yeah those are phillips head so these would come out so for example obviously the compressor has to be on this side for breathing this could be removed, which might give it a little bit more space, but it is curved there. I don't know if you can see that. It's like a uh, space, or sorry, a ship fuselage. So we're gonna slide this in. There's still plenty of plenty of vertical, but yeah, not as much give, obviously on either space. So I'd probably put it like that. Put a little something down there, make sure it doesn't slide back. And then let's see if we can reach in here with it. Reach in here and grab something. Be a little tight, but you could kind of snake out a water ball, bottle. You could kind of snake out a water bottle, perhaps. Wow, that is a strong smell coming from that thing. They do say you can use water and a little bit of baking soda. Kind of wipe it down. I think that's definitely what I would end up doing. Um, so we'll back up again. It doesn't actually, once it's in, it's not bad. It's similar to the other one as far as like really blocking you. It wouldn't block you that much. It doesn't stick out that much. Let's actually measure it. It's about seven inches, seven and a half. And you could also remove that if you wanted to be a little harder to, uh, actually pull it out, so I wouldn't recommend that, but I think that should do it. That's actually not bad. So you could go this route too. I just wish the quality of this one, I don't know how it works yet, but the quality could be uh, definitely better. One cool thing I just realized on this fridge, it is magnetic, because I have a magnet at the end of this tape measure and it sticks, so you could put fridge magnets. That's kind of neat. All right, now there we go. Click this guy, hold for three seconds. Ooh, all right, it's already set for Fahrenheit, nice. The fan is going, you can hear the fan. See, it's kind of like the no noise of an air conditioner. Yeah, I would say it's the noise of an air conditioner. pleasant it's not bad so <clears throat> let's see what the uh setting is okay so it's currently set for max and i'm fine with that let's i want to see how quickly we can get it down to the right temp temp control do the plus minus thing here you can switch the celsius fahrenheit you can lock it in case you have crazy kids and whoa oops i guess i did that what did i do strange Okay. Mm. Oh, okay. There's no touch. This is the only touch right here. 
So you've got the lock, unlock, hold for three sections to protect protection mode. Then it's got also some contact information here so you can reach out. Um, the LED's pleasant. It's, um, you can imagine if you're sleeping at night, you don't want anything like too crazy bright or whatever. Uh, it's telling you in this case, there really is no battery, but I think that's just telling you you have full power going to this thing and it is set for max. Oh, I did lock it, I guess. There, unlock. Okay, I have to hold it for three seconds. There. Now it's unlocked. What's the temp set at? 32 degrees is too cold. I wanted it at 40, is it 41? Okay. And the production mode, we don't need to worry about because we're plugged in. Now it's currently telling me it's 86 degrees. That's it, it's a pleasant noise. I will say the beep's a bit loud because if in the if in the middle of the night you wanted to lower the temp or raise the temp, listen. It appears to also have an auto lock. So if I want to unlock it, I have to do this. Three seconds, it's unlocked. Now I could just I just want to see what the temp. What does this do? It's max and eco. We want to leave that on max. Okay. You just click once to, you can see what the temp it's set for. From time to time, you can hear like a bubbling sound. That must be the uh, fluid there that's cooling everything. It's a little bit like a fish tank sound. The fan speed and sound are consistent. And you would want to keep, you would want to make sure this is well ventilated because I do feel here it's sucking air in. On this side, it's a slight breeze of warmer air coming through. Currently at 80 degrees. If I push this button again, it should display a 41. No, it's going to make me unlock it first. That's kind of annoying, but... Okay, now it's unlocked. If I push this once, yeah, it still says 41. Now, after like a minute or so, it, goes, it automatically goes to back to lock mode. So that's maybe the only annoying thing but at least you, you don't have to worry about people messing around with it. You're gonna hear beeps. You go, hey, what's going on back there? <laughs> you could. All right, so here on the temperature graph, you can actually see where it took about 38 minutes to get to from 82.8 degrees all the way to where it got to, in this case, on the Bouge RV, it said 41. Um, but it took about, it was till eight o'clock. To where it really got there so it was about 38 minutes when the thing went off okay i'm going to give you a sample of what what i've packed in here and it's actually a surprisingly good room so let's get some good lighting going on here so we have a standard six pack of beer although that's not alcoholic uh, that's all i had then there is a um a standard egg 12 eggs there and we have this is the best oat milk if you haven't tried it you can get it on amazon and uh, I've got two of those. You don't need a lot of extra things. You would keep your backups outside of this, right? So if you think about that, and this is a standard water bottle right here. What is that? A, that's one pint, 16.9 ounces. So you could have, and there's still room here, right? There's still up to this room-wise. So you could still put some stuff there. You wouldn't necessarily need to put all six in there, or you'd, you know, pack them tighter, um, but just to give you an idea of what you could fit in there. But there's still plenty of room for some tofu, vegetables, etc. 
a little bit of condensation building up there, but you'd expect that. And I left the door open for quite a while, but it's up to uh, 41 degrees again, and then it's gonna bring it down. All right, so when you pull the Coles Air up, it shows you the battery protection. So this LED is maybe a little nicer. Um, how many volts you're pulling, the temp is 80 degrees. Uh, the battery protection level is low. Okay, now I just opened the lid. You can see that it's nice to have the LED light. I do like that. Um, we're gonna go ahead. This is a dual zone, by the way. So, uh, in fact, it just went on. I haven't even set the temp yet. I guess it's just defaulting. So we'll see. Anyway, I put the sensor there and let's go ahead and shut that. Now let's get over here. Let's go through the settings. Okay, speed will set it to max like the other one. Temp. Let's to 40 degrees. Now here's the fan noise for this one. A bit more obvious. A little bit. All right, so it's reached 40 degrees. And one thing I do like is it does have this light. So that light is kind of cool. All right, this part gets very cold. And this is supposed to be when you have this divider in like the warmer sections like the refrigerator. So we'll shut that and I'll check the temp here in a second. All right, so it's, it's what I expected. The app shows 46 degrees. The refrigerator is 44 and the, the, the temperature puck is at a falling rate. So if I click on this, you can see it's still falling. There we go. That's the latest right there. As of 810, it took a sample and it's 46 degrees. So we're just within two degrees. That is really close. So, um, so far, the only thing I'm noticing, and I'll let you listen, is when it's colder, to me, the, the fan does seem a little more aggressive. Can I say that? All right, so now we're gonna open this thing up. It just bumped up to 35, so I had it at 32. Waits about three degrees, and then it drops it back down. So let's open it up. I just wanna feel the difference here, yeah. You can actually see it right there at 27 degrees. It's definitely, yeah, that's very cold. This side, yeah, it's not, it's not frozen. So it seems to be accurate. So this dual zone, I don't know if you take this out, obviously it must then cross over, but they've got it in such a way where this side definitely gets colder. All right, so now let's move over to the Bouge RV and try that one. So I thought I'd show you the boxes because what I was talking about is the quality of, of how people are preparing these things are heavy. And you would think a thick box like this would be, would be good enough. But this was the Coles Air, and that was the one that got banged up. This is the Bouge RV, double boxed. Nice, way to go, guys. See that, just that little bit of difference made such a better delivery experience versus this guy, which, again, we'll see how well it works. But packaging makes a big difference. All right, here's the Coles Air one. The, again, that thing kind of popped out, so I went ahead and unscrewed it. Just two screws, piece of cake. Looks kind of sloppy if you ask me. It feels like a hurry up and get it done kind of a thing. These are on shock absorbers, or rubber feet anyway. This is kind of interesting. Anyway, that's just crimped and soldered at the top. Hmm, not sure about the quality. You have a fan blowing across, and you have the electronics right there. So we'll see. This one just seems iffier and iffier. And the winner is between the two, believe it or not, the Coles Air. Even though it showed up to the party looking rough, it brought its A game. And they were both connected to a Rock Pals 300 watt portable unit. And when we ran the test and did the camping, um, the 
Coles Air ran for two and a half days. The other one couldn't even make it past the wee hours of the morning. It was around 3 a.m. and the Bouge RV cut out. So for just $50 more for the Coles Air, it actually was a better one. Now I must say right now it's not available on Amazon, but look around for variations that look like it. It's just how things are nowadays. But uh, I did like that one better overall. So hope this helps you in your refrigeration needs in your van life or whatever you're doing. Enjoy. Uh, please subscribe for other random videos. I have a lot of randomness. So take care. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace out.